Hey guys, Mr. Zern here with another vocabulary lesson. All right, so yesterday we were talking about variables and how that basically is the smallest unit of storage for a computer program, and we have global variables and local variables. All right, so regardless of what type of, va what type of variable, whether it's global or a local, um, the, there are four types of data, uh, data types that we can kind of, you know, can go into or be a, a variable. And those are integer, float, string, or Boolean. All right. So we're going to take a look at each one of these. So again, it doesn't matter whether it's a global variable or a local variable. Either one could be an integer, could be a float, could be a string or a Boolean. All right. So what do we got first? All right, the first one is integer. And so an integer is pretty simple. It's a whole number that does not have any digits or a decimal after it. So an example would be 2 or 175 or 23. Uh, but the moment we add a decimal and then a number after it, it's no longer an integer. It's something else, which we'll, we'll say here in a moment. Um, so 2 is an integer. But if I go 2.0, which you know we still kind of think of as 2, it's no longer an integer. It's actually a float. And so a float is another type of number. And floats typically are much more precise. And so uh, it's a digit followed by a decimal. So the example here is 6.8345. And so we've got a, a variable there, and, and it's a float because it's very precise. Now, kind of going back to the previous example, if I said 2, that's an integer. Once I go 2.0, that number has now become a float. And the computer kind of treats these differently. In, in Blockly, it, it's it's not. But uh, as we get into Python, uh, it will. So we've got an integer, which is sort of a, like a, just a whole number. We've got a float, which is a, a number with a decimal. And then next we have a string and that's at this point that's all we've been working with especially in blockly is we've been you know asking like your name and then how are you and people are putting in you know their name whether you know it's adam or john or jill uh answer the like, hello uh, good or bad or terrible uh to the other question there but that text is a string um, and so it's text or characters displayed by a, a program typically when we write it just uh, just to kind of make it easy to understand we will surround that uh, text uh, with quotation marks and that usually signifies that this chunk of, of information here is a, a string because we can get tricky and if I was to have uh, you know add quotation marks around a number that number then is actually a string and that's when we that's when we start to struggle with variables when we have like a, a string number, which is really just text from the computer perspective, and we're trying to add it to an integer or a float, and the computer can't do it. And that's why, because that, that number is not an integer or a float, it's, it's a string. But hey, basically, you know, we can think of it as text, really, but anything inside of quotation marks um, will become a, a, is a string, considered a string variable. All right, and then finally, we've got Boolean, and this is named after a person, and that is a data type that only has two values, usually denoted by true or false, and so very binary at, it, at its core, and so a Boolean can be true or a Boolean can be false, and so we'll get into these later and utilize them in, in um, things we start to do loops, like while loops or for loops, so, you know, kind of like while this condition is true, do this thing, or if this condition is false, do this other thing. We'll also use a little bit in conditional statements, uh, but that's a Boolean. So basically true or false. All right, so take a look. You're gonna have you pause the video here and there. So 3.16, what kind of variable is that? So pause it there and think, and then, you know, if you just shout it out or whatever on your own there, what is it? All right, if you said float, you're correct because it has a decimal after it. Next, we've got seven. What kind of variable is that? If you said integer, you're correct. Again, no decimal. All right, third, we have false. False. And if you said Boolean, that's, that's correct. All right, next, we've got hello. And if you said string, Great job. That's a string. Got those quotation marks there. All right. Uh, next row, we have seven. And you can't see my air quotes here. It's, it's a video. What kind is that? All right. If you said string, that is true. It's it's not a integer and it's not a float. We've added those quotation marks there. All right. True. 
If you said Boolean, that is correct. 5.0, that's a float. False. Now, if you said Boolean, you're wrong. That's a string, okay? So notice it's got the quotation marks around it. So if we were to add that, especially like in Python, the program would think, oh, that's uh, that's it's a text, it's string. It would treat it as that. It would not treat it as a true or false statement. 42. If you said integer, you're correct. Print. That's right, a string. If you said string, false. Yep, this time it's a Boolean. This time it's a Boolean. And then 50. That's right. If you said integer, great job. All right, so basically, you know, we've got variables we talked about, local and global. And it doesn't matter whether it's a local variable or, variable or a global variable. It could be an integer, a whole number. Could be a float, a number with a decimal. Could be a string, all right, right? Typically text, right? About, uh, at quotation marks, and then it could be a Boolean, so it's a true or false statement. All right, folks. Oops, we don't go to the next one yet. Uh, I'll talk to you guys later. Come on, there we go. And I'll see you guys in person soon. Bye.